Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to install CentOS or CentOS onto a computer. Before we do that, please always remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be kept up to date as I release new videos. But now, let's get into that video. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're gonna to look at the operating system CentOS. This is CentOS Linux and we're gonna go through the steps on how to install Linux CentOS onto a computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and download CentOS off the internet. We're then going to boot it and we're gonna go and then install it and show you really the basic steps on how to do all of that. But before we do that, we are gonna get ourselves a USB stick. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna make this USB stick bootable. I'm gonna download the ISO for CentOS and then load it onto the USB so then I can then plug the USB stick into a computer, boot from it, and then install CentOS. Now to create a bootable USB, I do use an application called Rufus, which is completely free. I do have another video that talks about how to do that if you don't know how to do that already. But you need a bootable USB with CentOS, and we go from there. So let's get into our computer right now. We're gonna plug it in, we're gonna boot into the BIOS, make sure that the BIOS can see the USB stick, and we'll go through the steps once we're there. So here we are in Google Chrome. We've just opened up our browser on our computer. I'm doing this on a Mac, but you can do this on a PC or wherever you may be using this uh, from. Uh, just open up your web browser and we're gonna look for in Google, we're gonna look for CentOS download, All right? Nice and easy. And we're gonna select the very top option, making sure that it's www.centos.org. And you're then gonna be presented with the download CentOS website. But you've got a couple of different options here. You can download the CentOS Linux DVD ISO or the Stream DVD ISO. We're gonna go and select Linux DVD ISO. It'll then ask you where you wanna download it from. So it should automatically detect where you are located and it will find mirrors, uh, essentially websites that are closer to where you live. So go and select really any of these. Uh, because I'm in Australia, it's presented a number of options around Australian websites where I can download it. So you download the one that's relevant to you. It doesn't matter really which one. So once you've selected one, it'll start to download. So here we are on our computer. This is a standard Lenovo uh, laptop. It's a bit of an older one. So I've gone into the BIOS. Now in my case on the Lenovo computer, I'm pressing F1 to get into my BIOS. Your computer will probably be different if you have a different brand, a different make, a different model, if it's a desktop, if it's a laptop. Um, maybe when you're booting it up, you've got a little um, you know, screen there that shows you press this key to get into the BIOS or into the setup. But getting into here, all we wanna just do is just ensure that it's going to boot from our USB, okay? Now again, every section will be different depending on your version, but this is just a really high level overview. So under boot here, I've just got my priority order and my first boot will be USB HDD or USB hard drive. So just ensuring that that is on there uh, will ensure that the hard drive or that the USB is actually booted first before going to the hard drive that is locally on your computer. If you're not seeing this page, uh, it's possible that you've got, that something's gone wrong. So you're gonna have to go back and troubleshoot, but we're assuming that everything is okay because you're now presented with this screen right here. For me, I know that my ISO is okay. So I'm gonna select install CentOS Linux 8. The pre-install steps will now begin and it's gonna ask me a few configuration options uh, for the next step. Now the great thing about this is that my keyboard and mouse works right within this console. So I can select my language, which will be English, if you can't tell from my dodgy accent, I'm from Australia, so I'm gonna select English Australia and select continue. Now I can go and configure some other things in here. I can change the time, my you know my time zone, I can do some other things. But down the bottom, you will see that it's saying to complete the items marked. So this is the installation destination. So I wanna ensure that my hard drive, this is the 80 gig hard drive that uh, we want. All right, so making sure that that is selected, I can click on done. That is now gone. And now we click on begin installation. Now I can do a few other things before I do that, including setting my network IP address, or you can let it go and get an IP automatically if you do have DHCP running on your network. 
You'll see that right here, it's got an option under software selection that says server with GUI. So this installation will install not only the CLI, which is the command line interface, but it'll also install the graphical user interface, which comes with a taskbar and all of the icons and all of the fancy stuff to make it look like a real life operating system. So if I select this, I can actually decide to just build the server as is and not actually get a graphical user interface with it. So you can choose one or the other. Now the command line is gonna log in and you just present it with a black screen and it's command line and you need to know how to navigate through it. If you want, you can go and do it with a server with the GUI. So just for this demo, we're gonna do it with server with GUI, select one or the other. So obviously if you're gonna be building this with a GUI, you're gonna require to give it a bit more additional resources than if it's just command line. So let's select begin installation. Now it's gonna start doing its thing, all right? So it's gonna it's gonna start installing all of the stuff in the back end. but while it's doing that, I can go and configure the root password and assign some credentials right here. So let's go ahead and set the root password. Done, and then user creation. I'm gonna leave that as just my first name, username the same. Make this user an administrator. Oh yes, I do, I would like that. And then the password for this user as well. So that is now done. So the root password is set, the user is set. Let this uh, run through, it may take a little bit of time. Installation should now be complete, so we can now say reboot. So now we're into the initial setup. So license information right here. I'm gonna give you some stuff. If you accept the license terms, you can do that. Say done, finish configuration. And here we are now presented with our login screen. So here's my username. I put in the password that I allocated previously and sign in. Now, if you are installing just the CLI, you're not gonna be presented with the nice graphical user interface like this. You're gonna be presented just with a black screen asking you for your username and password, which you will then input next. So this is again, just more configuration stuff. You can leave most of this all as default. If you wanna have location services on, uh, I can skip all of that and we can start using CentOS. That is CentOS now installed. You can go and configure a whole bunch of stuff. You can go and customize it. Uh, you can use the CLI if you so choose to by going into the terminal window right here. And I've got my CLI, so I can actually go and see everything right here, which is really, really nice. You know, so a full directory structure, but uh, that is the steps. So there you have it. They are the steps on how to install CentOS. Hopefully you were able to get it loaded onto a USB and then loaded and installed onto your computer without any problem. It is definitely a great operating system and really does give you a good exposure to the Linux operating system and the CLI, which is a command line interface. But either way, I would love it if you commented, give me a thumbs up if, if you did find it helpful. And as always, please remember to subscribe, clicking on that notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.